Hey guys, today I'm here to show you how to make some vegetarian food for pretty cheap. And the reason I'm making this video is because one of the cornerstones of financial and just life satisfaction is learning how to make cheap food and being able to save money by not going out to eat every day. So first things first, we're going to start off by cutting up our vegetables. Right where you have a potato and it's going to make the base for our dish. So in order to cut a potato properly, you have to make sure that you're holding a knife with thumb and pointer finger on either side of the handle. You're going to make one direct cut down the middle, flip it over, and then make another direct cut down the middle of that, flip it over again, and make another direct cut down the middle of that. This should give you evenly sized pieces that will cook evenly when boiling in water and when roasting in the oven. This ensures that no pieces go undercooked or no pieces go overcooked. Really important step in cutting all the vegetables. So next up is the base liver for a lot of our dishes, and that's going to be the onion. So the onions are pretty particular to cut. First you have to find the root, then you want to slice that off. So once you accidentally use a sawing motion with a knife that has no serrated edge, you're going to flip it over and cut off the other end. After cutting off the tip and the root, you should have something that's a lot easier to work with. So to peel off the skin, you want to cut it in half, and then find the first layer and just peel that right off. In order to dice an onion, you're going to want to make diagonal cuts on the onion side, making sure to go all the way down, as I don't do at the very last step of this video, but it's fine, we all make mistakes. What this is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to make smaller pieces and it's going to fry off and cook off easier in places where you don't want to know that there's too much onion. So then once you've made the diagonal cuts, you're going to flip the onion and then you're going to make horizontal cuts down the surface. This is going to give you nice bite-sized pieces and it's going to make it a lot easier to eat as I said before when you're cooking it in anything like stews, pastas, sauces, as you'll see coming up. If you ever get any little bits left over, you can just flip them on their side and cut them up like that. Now, cutting onions does release a lot of uh, very toxic things, so I recommend wearing a ski mask at all times so you don't cry like a little baby while cutting onions in your living room. Okay, now the second way to cut an onion is going to be long semicircular slices. So these are going to be better for salads, anything you want to present the onion as something that you know you're going to be eating. We're going to be roasting it and it's going to give it a nice look once it's a little browned up and the edges are a little golden. Um, I really like this method for anything where you're going to actually be showing off the onion in little circular slices like this. The onion is going to be the base of our flavor in most of these recipes, so you want to make sure that you get these techniques down right. Next up is going to be a bell pepper, which are a bit more difficult to cut. So first off, you want to take the head off, and then what you really don't want to eat is the insides or any of these gills that I'm pointing out here, mostly because they're tougher and a little bit harder to cook. So to get rid of them, you're going to run your knife alongside the edge of the gill, as I'm doing here, and then this is going to separate the flesh away from all the gills. And do the same on the other side, meet all the way at the bottom, and suddenly you have a very nice piece of bell pepper flesh that you can cook up any way you want. So do this all around the edge of the pepper, you can even get fancy and do both edges at the same time, and then you'll be ending up with a nice clean cut bell pepper. That's kind of the stuff you don't want to eat. You could use it, but it becomes a lot harder to make clean cuts. So the bell pepper's got two sides, the inside and then the outside. The outside's kind of hard to cut through because the skin is a little bit thick. So whenever you're cutting through a bell pepper and you want to make clean cuts, you want to cut along the inside, just down the lines. And then if you make even slices, they'll cook evenly in a saute pan or in an oven, and you'll get nice little julienne pieces, kind of like this. So the next vegetable is a carrot. Carrots add a lot of base of flavor to dishes because they have a really sweet taste, naturally. So the normal way to peel a carrot is to pull the knife blade towards you. This takes off the top layer of skin and kind of takes a little bit of the flesh away with it. This is a little bit inefficient, so it's not the way you want to do this. What you want to do is you want to grab your knife and you want to point the blade not towards you, but away from you. So push that knife away from you and it kind of grinds off the top layer of the carrot. This removes much less of the flesh and is also a quicker method, especially once you get good at it. So once you have your carrot peeled, you want to take the head off. This is usually doesn't taste very good and it's kind of hard. Now, once you have the carrot peeled and deheaded, you want to make sure that you lay it on the flattest side and kind of just thinly slice downwards. 
These thin slices will cook more evenly in an oven or frying pan, as I've said before, and will make the carrot easier to eat. Once you've made enough incisions, you can lay it down on the flattest side and it'll make it a lot easier to cut. Another option is to cut the carrot in half and then go from there. So our next vegetable is going to be a little weird. It's going to be elephant garlic. Now elephant garlic, as you can tell, is huge. It's way bigger than regular garlic. The good thing about this is, is that it makes it much easier to peel, although it requires a bit more strength. So if you just lay the flat part of your hand down on the, on the flat part of your knife and give it a smash, it'll open up the garlic. Now this makes it prime for cutting and doing anything you want with it. So just lay it down like an onion and just give it a slice. The way I'm doing it here is dicing it up. This is good for, as I said before, sauteing and putting into dishes. Once you have your rough chop done, you can go over the garlic again to make it a finer dice. Put one hand on the tip of the blade and the other on the handle and go across it like this. This makes it a nice fine chop and makes it really good for putting into soups, sauces, and anything of the like. Now, a second way to chop garlic is the same as the first way. Give it a crush and open it up. Then just slice thin slices as we did with the onion. This gives the garlic a more noticeable appearance, and if you want to roast it, it makes nice roasted garlic chunks. Now if you're doing this with regular sized garlic, you don't need to cut it up, you can just bust it open and then put it in the oven. Hey guys, I completely forgot to record myself cutting up a shallot, but it's the exact same as an onion. I believe in you guys, I think you can do it. Just go out there and try. Anyways, back to the video. So now that we're done cutting up all of our vegetables, we want to get started actually cooking. So take a nice big pot, uh, any that you have, as long as it can fit the potatoes. So turn up your heat all the way to high and set it on the highest burner. Now fill your pot with water and get your sliced potatoes and try to put them in, but completely miss all of the potatoes. Yep, there it goes, another one. Yep, nope, another one, and another one. Okay, get most of the potatoes in there. You can clean up afterwards. Now, you wanna heavily salt your water since these are sliced and the salt will actually get inside of them and give them flavor. Once your potatoes are fully cooked, you can tell because you'll be able to slide your fork right into them and they'll fall off to the touch. So you can put a really hot potato in your hand and then stab it with a fork and if it goes right through, it's good to go, and you can take them out of the water. There you go, fully cooked potatoes. So for our first dish, we want to take the potatoes, the onions, the carrots, the bell peppers, and the garlic, and toss it all into a bowl. To this, we're going to want to add a fat so they brown nicely in the oven. My choice is olive oil. So you want to add enough to where you can coat all the vegetables, and honestly, even a bit more is better. Next up is salt, because you have to add salt to everything, especially vegetables, because they're usually pretty bland by themselves. Next up is pepper, freshly cracked if you can get it. Just enough to give it some spice and maybe a little bit of heat. You wanna turn the coarseness all the way to high. This is gonna give you a lot of really peppery taste when you're eating it and not kind of just like a smooth undertone. You're gonna get really punched by this pepper. Next up is cumin. Cumin adds a really nice curry taste, especially to vegetables. It gives it a really good earthy undertone and kind of helps the flavors of the vegetables shine through. Next up is turmeric. Turmeric just gives it a really nice color. Honestly, the flavor isn't too noticeable, but you know, it does give it a nice curry flavor as well. Next up is sesame oil. Now you really wanna be careful with this because it's super strong. For all these vegetables, all you need is a capful, and honestly, that is only if you really like sesame oil. If you've never tried it, just try half a capful. Next up, get your hands in there and just mix it up. Also, try to get a larger bowl so you don't end up dropping like half your vegetables. Get it really well, well mixed in. You want oil to be covering every single piece. If your hands look like this, you know you did a good job. So preferably, you wanna get a baking sheet, but I didn't have that, so I'm gonna be using this glass tray that also works. You wanna pour in a thin layer of vegetables, and that's so they get really nice and brown. This will work better on a baking sheet, but this will do okay in a glass pan as well. Wait, 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 I forgot. You need your protein, so get some garbanzo beans. A can of them is fine, you can cook them yourself, but they don't really taste much better. So open them up and pour them in and lay them nice on top. And then if you forgot to add them in like I did, just mix it up and you'll be fine. So turn your oven to 425 degrees, turn it on and put them in. Next up, we're gonna be making some tofu. So we're gonna be frying this, so you want extra firm tofu. Softer tofus will fall apart once you put them in the pan. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna slice it down into about half an inch chunks. I think this is a good size for keeping them crispy, but also having a little bit more volume while you're eating them. So it's not just batter. 
So in order to fry these, we're gonna set up a station with flour, eggs, and breadcrumbs, panko preferably. So you're gonna wanna salt your eggs and also your breadcrumbs and put pepper in both as well. This is just basic seasoning. Along with that, we're gonna add a little bit of sriracha to the eggs to give them a little bit of spice. Sriracha also has garlic and some other flavors that really complement eggs and tofu. Next up, we're gonna do rosemary and thyme. This is just because I love the flavor of oil, rosemary, and thyme. I think it fries up really nicely and gives anything that is fried in a really good taste. We're putting it in the breadcrumbs, so it's on the outermost layer, so it really gets in contact with that oil and perfumes it as we're cooking the tofu. Just get in there and mix it up with your hands and also stir up the sriracha and egg as well. So what you're gonna wanna do is grab your tofu slices and first dip them in the flour. This is gonna add a nice layer, which the eggs can adhere to. Without this, the eggs will kinda just slide off. Then you wanna shake off the excess flour and put it into the egg mixture. You wanna really dredge it and make sure that there's no spots that are left with just flour. If there are spots with only flour, the panko crumbs won't stick. Next. Put it into the Pranko crumbs and really flip it around. Get it in there and get it nice and coated. You want this to be as crunchy as possible. And if you want, throw some on top, it'll be a good time. Grab a plate and put it on there and continue with the rest of your tofu. No lie, these look like the fish in the SpongeBob episode. Pretty good though, pretty good. All right, so next up we wanna get some canola oil and we wanna pour it all across the bottom. You wanna get about half an inch of canola oil, maybe a little bit less. You know it's hot and ready whenever you can throw a piece of breading into it and it fries. So when putting in your tofu pieces, you wanna throw them away from you. That way, if any oil does splash, it does not splash towards you. You will thank me later, cause it really hurts when you have hot oil just destroy you. So you can probably fit in about four pieces in a pan this size. Uh, I would recommend not trying to overcrowd the pan because it'll lower the heat of the oil and when you put fried or breaded foods into cold oil, they just get soggy because they soak it up. The reason it gets crispy is because it hardens almost immediately when it hits the hot oil. That's key. So give these about three to four minutes on each side. What you really want to look for is that golden browning. That means that it's going to be done. Uh, a little bit longer and it would have gotten burnt and that's not the worst thing in the world. So. Definitely shoot for a little bit overcooked and undercooked because the tofu gets really delicious when it gets crispy. The best way to check is honestly not time though because everyone's pans and stoves and uh, oil differs. So just lift them up and check underneath and that's how you know they're gonna be done. Also, just like throw it around a bit, it's fine. You're not, you don't have to be good at cooking. Just, yeah, there you go. Look at me, I'm doing it. Okay, so now that we're done with our tofu, we're gonna start off with our tomato sauce. So we're gonna pour some oil into a cleaned out pan and I'm going for olive oil because it's just traditional with tomato sauce and it gives it a really nice flavor. In this oil, we're gonna fry off our garlic, onions, and shallot. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to take a can of regular ordinary tomato sauce and turn it into something that's much more flavorful without having to go through the whole process of making tomato sauce from scratch. Now, while you're starting off this sauce, get a pot in the background and fill it up with water and as much salt as you can. It wants to taste like the sea. That's just a common saying and it's super true. Once the onions and garlic have started to turn translucent, you want to throw in your canned tomato sauce. Now this sauce is going to be thick out of the bottle, so you're going to want to go to your nearest water source and fill up the can or jar a bit and throw that in there. This is going to allow the flavors to get to know each other without having the sauce get too thick. To the sauce, you're going to want to add some brown sugar, especially if you got it out of a can. This really cuts through the acidicness of the tomatoes and any metallic flavor that it might have. Stir it up and let it simmer for a while until the edges of the sauce start to kind of form a little bit of tomato paste. That's how you know it's done. About 45 minutes of cooking, you want to add some oregano and some soy sauce to this. And that's really going to kick up the flavor. Once you let that boil off for about 10 minutes, then you're ready to take it off the pan and just put it away. It's done. After your super confusing jump cut, you're going to take some butter and put it into your drained and cooked pasta. This is going to add some flavor and also prevent it from clumping in the fridge when you go to save it later on. So for our third dish, we're gonna add some butter to the bottom of a pan or pot, and we're gonna add our root vegetables. So our garlic, shallots, and onions, and we're gonna fry those off until they're nice and browned. So once our vegetables are nice and brown, we're gonna take some rice with no water and put it in the pot. What this is gonna do is it's gonna toast the rice and give it a nice nutty flavor for later on in the dish. You know your rice is ready for water once it's gotten a little brown and starts to smell a little nutty. So add in enough water to cover the rice and monitor it. 
You're going to need to add more or less water depending on what kind of rice you have. Brown rice takes more water to cook and white rice takes a little bit less. Once the rice is just barely undercooked, we're going to add a can of black beans. Mix this up and let the flavors get to know each other. Once the black beans and rice have been cooking for about 5 minutes, add a handful of parsley. This parsley is going to give it a nice herby flavor and really lift up the base notes of the nutty rice and the butter. So now we're going to make 4 vinaigrettes that can go on any of these foods. The first one is going to start off with hummus. Then to the hummus, we're going to add a little bit of lemon juice. You can add anywhere from half a lemon to a full lemon depending on how much you like the flavor. And then after the lemon, we're going to mix that up and then add some mustard to give it a little bit of kick. Dijon preferably. Yeah, that's the good stuff. So for our next vinaigrette, we're going to make a scallion based sauce. This is going to include, obviously, scallions, a little bit of olive oil, and half a lemon worth of juice. To that, we're going to add a little bit of mustard, some salt, and a little bit of freshly cracked pepper. So the acidity of the mustard and the lemon juice is going to kind of pickle the scallions and it's going to make it really good. So on to the next sauce. So we're going to start off with the requisite olive oil, add a little bit of sesame oil, a lot goes a long way, a little bit of rice wine vinegar, some pepper, and a little bit of honey, spicy honey if you have it. And really mix that up and it's going to kind of emulsify. Now it's time to move on to our final sauce. We're gonna start with a little bit of red wine vinegar, add some olive oil, of course, a little bit of pepper, and a little bit of salt. This is super basic, but it's a really good vinaigrette if you're in a hurry and don't have very many ingredients. So we have our honey vinaigrette, our regular vinaigrette, our mustard scallion vinaigrette, and our hummus vinaigrette. These are all super good to put on basically anything. So that's it, now we have all of our food. We have our fried tofu, our cooked vegetables, our tomato sauce, our pasta, and our beans and rice, along with all of our vinaigrettes that we made. So now that we have all of our food prepped, I'm gonna show you some basic meals that you can make out of these ingredients that are filling, vegetarian, and very good. So the first thing you see here is, is a fried tofu, tomato sauce, and pasta. The fried tofu is super crispy and really delicious. The rosemary and thyme really give it some good flavors. Now, the pasta and pasta sauce are a classic combination. The pasta sauce is super garlicky, super oniony, and a little sweet. All in all, a super good savory sweet combination that I would highly recommend. So next up is the roasted vegetables with hummus vinaigrette. Really looking forward to this one. So my first flavor notes were, wow, that hummus is really mustardy and really good. It packs a powerful punch to kind of cut through the base notes of the roasted vegetables and mixes really well with the roasted garlic. The curry flavors of the roasted vegetables mix super well with the hummus and kind of makes it an overall Mediterranean Middle Eastern experience. Would highly recommend. So third up, I made a fried egg and put it on top of the roasted vegetables along with some fried tofu and some tomato sauce. This one also looked pretty good. So first off, I tried to cut through my egg and then 